watching Oink Cluck Moo, all things barbecue. Uh, I am going to take you through a little test between the fire dial and the factory water pan in the Weber smoker. Here I am, setting up the pit, reading the paper. What the hell am I doing? Um, lighting the pit. So what we're going to do is we are going to take uh, two 20-pound bags of charcoal, take even amounts of coal from each light them, and then put the even amounts of coal back into the pits and do a minion method burn for who knows how long. Let's do some scientific stuff. I'm going to set some markers. We have um, the marker of which smoker is going to get up to 225 first. We're going to set the next marker to 250 and then to 275. Once it hits 275, I'm going to use a toothpick. I'm going to put it in the to the uh, the, the vents um, on the on the lower part, um, and I'm going to close the vents down to the width of a toothpick so they're all even. I'll shut all three vents down to the width of a toothpick to get a long burn. If the temperatures go over 350 at that point, I will shut down one vent, followed by two vents if temperature doesn't fall or drop. Quick point, if the temperature drops below 200 degrees Fahrenheit prematurely before 12 hours anticipated burn, then I'll open the lower vents back up. So temperature's perfect today outdoor. It's like 88, very little humidity. So I think this will give me a good test for this weather. I've placed probes directly over the center of each grate, each level, and each smoker through an apple. Here I'm just dispersing the lit coals to each pit evenly. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pour the water into the water pan after I put the smoker on the unit, only because that's my preference. When I use the water pan, I was an avid water pan user for years. Um, I just don't trust lifting the smoker, especially a 22 inch over the coals. Um, I did it before and I extinguished my pit. That was the last time I did that. Um, so now I pour the water slowly um, directly through the grates. All right, so the smoker reached the temperature of 275 with the fire dial first. So the other one's still climbing up to 250 at the point. Um, so what I want to do, I want to close down the vents to the width of toothpick. Oh. Oh. Do, I, do I have lettuce in my teeth? Where's the bacon? I, uh, uh. Okay, it is the next morning, 6.58 a.m. Mean Joe Green, which is that smoker, uh, is at a temperature of 176 internal, which is not bad. Um, Fat Man, which is this guy, that's the one with the water pan. It is at 130 degrees internal temperature. Lower grades 133, upper grades 126. The fire dial, upper temp, upper grade temperature is 173, lower grade temperature is 180. So definitely held its temperature longer in the fire dial. Um, just to show you, I'm not screwing around here. It's probably handy because. Okay, so let's look in the chamber and see what the coals look like. Doo -doo -doo. So this is the fire dial. See, there's the fire dial. It's 
still has like some forming uh, of coals in there. Still somewhat burnt too. Still has coals in there as well. Definitely can see more grays. So that is how the fire dial is more efficient in the fuel burning. All right, let's see which one is going to be declared the winner. Um, whether the fire dial is proven to be more uh, efficient or if the water bowl really doesn't make any difference. Okay, so let's look through the Weber app and figure out where we are temperature-wise for each of the grades. So uh, the first smoker we're looking at is Fat Man. That is the water pan smoker. We're going to look at the upper deck or the upper grate first. Um, burnout occurred somewhere around 4.15 a.m. where it reached below 200 degrees. Um, now if we back up to midnight, it's at 223 degrees for the upper grate. 8 p.m. it's at 264 degrees. And then at 4 p.m. it was at 240 degrees. So um, pretty interesting there. Now if we look at the lower grate for the water pan, um, you had a temperature around midnight at 225 degrees, 8 p.m. was 242 degrees, and 4 p.m. was 237 degrees. Um, so interesting there. Um, and again, the burnout happened around 4.15 a.m. So if we look at Mean Joe Green, that's the smoker with the fire dial. We have um, temperatures at the upper grate, which we're looking at now. Midnight, 240 degrees. 8 p.m., 267 degrees, and 4 p.m., 269 degrees. Uh, now, looking at the lower grate, uh, we have um, 252 degrees at midnight, 270 degrees around 8 p.m., which is, I had to open the other vent, um, and I'll explain that in a second, and then 270 degrees at 4 p.m., all right, since we saw the probe uh, differences in each of the grates for both the water pan and the fire dial, here is a chart that shows the temperatures that include the probe port as well. Um, so you'll see this water pan smoker had a, uh, a lot of varying temperatures. So um, if you look at the total variation between the probe port and the grates, at 4 p.m. you're looking at a difference of 28 degrees, 33 degrees at 8 p.m., and 12 degrees at midnight. So you'll see the spike in temperatures or the variance was between the probe port and the lower grate. It's probably because the water pan deflects the heat to the outside of the smoker and then it comes back in. Uh, so uh, let's look at the fire dial. So I mentioned that I had to open the one vent back up for the fire dial. It actually started to... I don't want to say snuff out, um, but the temperatures started dipping below 220, so I opened the one vent wide open um, right around that 8 p.m. mark. So that was a spike in temperature that you saw. Uh, looking at the uh, temperatures here, the probe difference to the lower grate and the upper grate, the variance is minimal. You'll see that the midnight uh, probe port was 248 degrees, Upper grate was 240 and lower grate was 252 with a variation of 8 degrees. That was the largest variation we had, and that was 12 hours into the cook. But to get to the point of the fire dial, the total variations, 1 degree at 4 p.m., 3 degrees at 8 p.m., and 8 degrees at midnight. Needless to say, it also reached 275 way quicker than the water pan. All right, so to wrap it up, I mean, the... The fire dial is definitely a clear winner here. It holds a nice even temperature throughout your smoker. Um, you really, it's a cheap mod. It's, it works wonders. I mean, if you're not a believer and you don't believe this data, I didn't cheat anything out. Um, I mean, the fire dial had a longer burn time too. I mean, it, it I didn't indicate it in the video, I don't believe, but uh, it burned out. It got below 200 degrees at 5 a.m. Uh, that's 45 minutes longer burn than the water pan, not including the 40, the, the 30 minutes faster it got up the temperature. So technically it burned an hour and a quarter, uh, one hour and 15 minutes longer. So uh, I don't know what else to tell you if you're not sold on this, but um, 
uh, keep an eye out for another video coming out. I'm going to show you just the other benefits that I learned on the fire dial um, just to make your life easier rather than trying to clean up the slop in the water pan. Um, I, I, that stuff's nasty, so um, I never know what to do with the water. It's disgusting when I'm pouring it down my drain in my house and slopping it all over the place. It's just not, it's not, it's not easy. So maybe you have a system that works for you. Um, look, if I didn't sell you in this video, then I didn't sell you at all. You're not, you're not into that mod, then fine. But um, I think the data shows that this is definitely a clear winner. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, you know I appreciate your time, and I, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click like and tell your friends. Uh, I hope to release some more videos. Uh, I'm going to be putting up a, a smokehouse for the Webers. That's going to be another video series, but that's that mess right over there, right there. That's going to be my smokehouse. So anyway, stay tuned. Later. Thanks for watching my channel, Oink Cluck Moo, all things barbecue. Uh, be sure to visit www.bbqsmokermods.com to obtain your very own fire dial. Enjoy!